and his assist as well. Um, so, you know, I had it in my mind to, you know, if I can keep Cole quiet, then it's a huge part of their game gone. Curtis Jones was a man possessed yesterday. Genuinely, his performance was unbelievable. And in my opinion, he's going to be a big reason as to why Liverpool will be successful this season. Liverpool have high aspirations of potentially winning the league title, going far in the Champions League. And keeping Curtis Jones fit will be the key to that. I'll explain why in a second. But listen, we can't just brush over his performance yesterday, though. We got to speak about it in depth. I mean, just look at this. Let me just reel off some stats. Six out of eight draws won. One, six ball recoveries, three out of four tackles won, 90% pass accuracy, two shots, two key passes, one interception, one penalty won, and one goal. Man of the match. Those stats sound unbelievable, but in my opinion, they don't do his performance justice. Like, the guy was genuinely unbelievable. You look at both boxes, the block that he made for Cole Palmer. If Cole Palmer scores that, Chelsea go into half time, the game's 1 1, the game's level, it's a completely different game. Then you look at the goal he scored as well, the time of that, that was straight after Chelsea scored theirs. They were feeling confident, they were thinking, oh my god, we might even be able to win this. And then he just shuts them up. Listen, hold this. But the most important thing is what he said in that interview after the game. In his head, he saw Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer is the guy for Chelsea. Everything goes through him. And he made it a mission to stop him. Literally nullified Cole Palmer's whole threat. Where was Cole Palmer in that game? Like, I didn't see him. Liverpool's upcoming fixtures are ridiculous. They've got a tough period coming up. You look at games against Arsenal and the Emirates, Manchester City at home, Real Madrid at home coming up. Curtis Jones, it's imperative. He starts in these games because you look at the goal that he scored yesterday the box instincts that arrive late in the box we've seen he's got that numerous times he's done it against Leicester a couple years ago in the Premier League he's done it against Spurs as well in that same season he's got the knack the smell for goals he knows when to arrive late in the box like Gundogan used to do back in the day so he could be a big goal threat in them games and then you look at also the fact that let's just say someone like McAllister a big criticism about McAllister and even Harvey Elliott is they don't press with the intensity that someone like Sabozlai does they don't have the capacity to run box to box that arrive late in the box and also defend as well and then on the other hand you look at Sabozlai the main criticism for him is that his ability to turn in the pockets isn't really the best when he receives the ball from let's just say Van Dijk drills the ball into him the majority of the time he just passes the ball back like even when he has space to turn he doesn't progress to play like someone like Gravenberg does but do you know who combines all of them attributes it's Curtis Jones genuinely like you talk about the press resistance he's got it in abundance you talk about the passing ability I'm gonna show you a clip of an outside in the boot pass that he played to Darwin Nunez last season ridiculous ball you look at the defending ability is there I was just talking about a block that he made in his own box literally yesterday against Cole Palmer physicality he may not look the strongest but the guy is strong like he rarely ever gets knocked off the ball and the balance he has comes into that as well he's a tall guy but bro when was the last time that you saw Curtis Jones losing the ball the only ever time you're getting a ball off Curtis Jones is if he gives the ball away with a bad pass like no one is tackling him he reminds me a lot of like he has a lot of the qualities that Bernardo Silva has for Manchester City and funny enough if you look at FB Rev the most similar to players are Curtis Jones if you look at the numbers is Bernardo Silva and we know about Bernardo Silva literally we've seen it as Liverpool fans Bernardo Silva in big games there's a reason why Pep Guardiola always plays him if it's right wing he's playing he even played him left back a couple years ago in a game against Arsenal like he wants him on that pitch no matter what and it's because of that press resistance like the ability to not lose the ball you give control to your side because if you have a player in there that keeps losing the ball I mean you're giving the likes of Arsenal the likes of Manchester City in these big games you're giving them opportunities to attack you and listen if you keep giving the ball away and allow them to attack constantly bro they're gonna punish you sooner or later now, in these upcoming games I would play this team I would play Curtis Jones as a number 10 especially now that Jota we don't know if he's injured or not I mean he just came off of an injury in the first half more often than not if a player is coming off injured in the first half they're not gonna be available in the next game so he's probably going to miss the next couple of weeks at least that means Darwin Nunez is going to play and what are Darwin Nunez's qualities he has the ability to run in behind he turns defenses he runs the channels he has the speed to run in behind but what he is is he's a chaos player like he's a chaos merchant even though his hold up play has improved he's not someone that's going to be linking play and never losing a ball like he's a risk taker he's going to take a lot of risks then you look on the right hand side you've got Trent who's another risk taker Salah's a risk taker too that's why it's so important to play this midfield to combat that you've got McAllister who rarely ever loses the ball Gravenberg again Jones one of the most pressure resistant players in the league like with these three keeping the ball we're gonna have a lot more attack so we're gonna be attacking the opposition and then we're gonna be giving less balls away so they're gonna have less chance to attack us if you look at the comments in this video I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with the comments I've made because a lot of guys they they underrate Curtis Jones genuinely he's one of the most underrated players in the league because if you look at the news yesterday the team news after it was announced that McAllister was gonna be on the bench Curtis Jones was gonna be starting literally you had so many guys so many accounts saying oh I can't 
can't believe Curtis Jones is starting. I'm so nervous. Have you seen Curtis Jones this season? Against West Ham, he was one of the best players on the pitch, if not the best. Crystal Palace, the away game, he played number 10 in the position that I was just mentioning earlier. And he was unbelievable. Then you go back to last season, the Christmas period, where he had a run in the side. The games against Newcastle, like, the guy was unbelievable too. Curtis Jones' biggest flaw at the moment is his injuries. I mean, the guy gets so many niggling injuries, even at the start of the season. He missed the United game, like, he always picks up these little injuries. And that hurts him because, let's just say he's in the team, he's playing well like he is right now. He'll have an injury, he'll miss a couple of games, and then by the time he's back, his rhythm is gone. So he's starting from zero again. Also, what i found is that he's not like a plug-and-play player. Like, when he comes back from injuries, he often needs, like, a spell in the team. He needs to have, like, a good few games, and then you see the best of Curtis Jones. Maybe that's why people underrate him because there is kind of this goldfish memory when it comes to football players. When you're injured, people often forget what you can do and then you come back if you don't hit the ground running when you come back and then they're kind of indicated. They're like, see, look, we didn't rate him anyway. And funnily enough, like, it could also be that we've seen Curtis Jones come from the academy. Like, we've seen his whole growth as a player. Like, instead of someone like a McAllister where he was making his mistakes back in Argentina or Brighton, as Liverpool fans, we didn't see that. When he's arrived in the team, we've just seen him as the finished product. However, Curtis Jones, we still have memories of him making mistakes. So we're still judging him like he's that young player that's fresh from the academy. The same thing kind of happens to Trent Alexander-Arnold too. Like, if you look at the, some of the discourse around Trent Alexander-Arnold, it's 2024. Trent's been defending well for over a year now, but people still talk about the same things. Oh, Trent can't defend. Like, Trent's been defending well for over two years. Like, the guy is a good player. If you don't believe me, just look at the England Under-21 tournament, the Euros that they won last year. That team had the likes of Cole Palmer, who everyone's ready even about if you ask Liverpool fans right now to sign Cole Palmer they would be so happy they would be over the moon you look at Gibbs White he was in that team Colwell was in that team who Liverpool fans were begging for a couple years ago Anthony Gordon who Liverpool fans literally wanted to sign they wanted him to start over guys like Gakpo and Luis Diaz this summer Curtis Jones was up there if not better than most of them you look at the semi-finals who got man of the match Curtis Jones final who got man of the match Curtis Jones. There's a reason why he was in the latest England squad. Like, he wasn't in that England squad for fashion. Like, if you look at the way Carsley speaks about him, like, it's always raving review. And speaking about Carsley, let's get into England for a second because if you look at in front of me, this is probably England's best 11. Luke Shaw, if he's fit, he's probably the left back. Trent, undoubtedly, for me, there's no debate between him and Kyle Walker. If you think Kyle Walker is better than Trent in 2024, get your eyes checked. Rice is the team's holding midfielder. Jude Bellingham, of course, has to play. Rashford, you can put in Greedish, you can put in Gordon. It doesn't really change much. Saka, again Cole Palmer can play as well but near enough this is probably what the team is going to be as you can see there's a position missing though I've only put 10 players on this pitch not 11 in my opinion this position next to Declan Rice the second midfielder it's up for grabs Kobe Mainu is battling for that shirt Angel Gomez as well Adam Morton was in the Euro squad but no one is speaking about Curtis Jones bro he should be in them discussions like genuinely bro he could fit that role perfectly you look at what England were missing in the Euros a player who has the personality to receive the ball in deeper areas Curtis Jones can do that you look at the physical the running power that people talk about mainly lacking, Curtis Jones has that. If Declan Rice is holding, maybe you need a player to attract defenders, make late runs into the box, Curtis Jones can do that. And then finally, he's got experience playing in that position and has actually won a trophy of England. The England 21s that I mentioned earlier, Curtis Jones is playing as a deeper midfielder in a double pivot and he was perfect, the guy was outstanding. So in my opinion, he should be in contention, genuinely. Thomas Tuchel, if you're watching this video, listen, call up Curtis Jones, he will not let you down. But yeah guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash the like button subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed also turn on post notifications so you're notified when i upload and without further ado